What's good, everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new WWE action figure set up for you guys, and it is Hell in a Cell edition. Now, usually, you know, our setups are kind of wacky. They get kind of crazy. We'll have stuff getting destroyed. We'll have all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Cars flipped over, things thrown around. I tried to keep this one more realistic, more subtle, more realistic, and more, I don't know how to really describe it, more like, uh, like you would actually see backstage at a WWE event with some real storytelling and stuff like that involved but let's go ahead and get into it guys the first thing i want to mention is that we've actually filled up the full area like we got the office we have the locker room we set up this little wall here if you're an og fan of the channel if you guys have been with me for a very long time this may look a little familiar i set this wall up very similar to how i used to have it in the backstage area so i don't know if you guys if you guys remember that please let me know down in the comment section below i don't know how you would prove it but i don't know we'll probably have a bunch of people just saying they remember it but they really don't remember it but anyways that's kind of a callback to that but we did we fixed up the the backstage area a little bit we got some great stuff going on going into hell in a cell this weekend three hell in a cell matches man absolutely ridiculous i don't know how the hell they're going to get away with that hopefully they don't get repetitive i am looking forward to some matches on the card there's only four matches so far three of them which are hell in a cells but i i, I meant i was looking forward to some of those matches some of those hell in a cells and hopefully they live up to the hype but let's shut the hell up and dive into the setup guys i guess we can start off in the gm's office or or yeah, yeah, we'll get into that. And we'll work all the way back down here. So we got a lot to cover. So if you guys see here, you will see this is also a callback to the old MDT backstage area. But MDT general manager on the door right there. So you go through the door and you enter into the GM's office. Right now, it's Vince McMahon's office. So I do have Vince McMahon talking with Otis in the office. And uh, basically, Otis is holding that money in the bank briefcase. And he's like, you know, man, let me cash this in. I've held it on. You know, I've held on to it for quite a while. I think it's time for me to cash it in. And I just just feel like Vince is like, no, Brad, we're about to take that off of you and give it to somebody else because I don't like you. I just put that on you because I wanted to have shock value because nobody would see it coming and it's such good shit. So yes, that, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that is that is the reason. He just wanted the shock value. He didn't really care long term about the about the briefcase, about Otis and that's what we got going on. So Vince McMahon talking to Otis and uh, yeah, I don't know who you'd give it to, to be honest with you, but it's definitely not going to be Otis. But if we come out of the GM's office, guys, we will be entered into to the man, the the, the the I was gonna say the man's locker room, but it's the men's locker room. So right here, oh my god, the damn lamp went out. All right, I got it. So in the men's locker room, guys, we got some nice catering set up over here. If you guys want to get in on that, we got some pizza, we got some bottles and drinks. And to be honest with you, like if you take a look at it closely, like you know when you're looking at it like this, it's like oh that's pretty nifty and it looks great. But if you zoom in over here, it's like you got a random can of soda, some coffee, some pancakes, some bags of chips, and some water. It's like it's just some catering, Brad. A random spoon and knife. But when you're looking at it like this for photography or something, it, it looks okay. We also got pizza in the house, which is all great. You got the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre going for a slice. You got the, the coolers over there with the bottles and the cups. And Lars Sullivan over here, trash. He is uh, digging into the little, uh, I don't know how I can get in here. Maybe maybe a little over the head shot right there. I don't know how much you guys can see there because I can't really see the camera. But you guys can see we use the little bit of the bubbly ringside exclusive Chris Jericho accessories for that and we also have a uh, you know a thing full of apples but so if this is backstage at Hell in a Cell we got a lot of stuff going on here so backstage at Hell in a Cell they they really have not done much for these superstars we got pizza and, and pancakes some catering Brad but over here guys we do have Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura talking it up you guys know the former tag team champions trying to you know figure out what they can do we don't know like who all has matches we know there's like four matches right now announced which we'll get into so I'm sure some more matches will be announced I'm sure the Hell in a Cell matches are going to take a big up chunk of the of the card there. But we got Matt Riddle hanging out on the couch right there. He's got his feet propped up on a cinder block. So he's hanging out on the couch. We also have Jeff Hardy chilling back here. And he's just chilling in the men's locker room. So Jeff Hardy's chilling in the chair. He does have a matchup with Elias. So that should be interesting. Haven't seen uh, Elias in ring action in a while on pay-per-view. We have Aleister Black walking through the locker room right there. He is feuding with Kevin Owens at the moment. At least that's the last time I saw it. So Aleister Black's just walking chilling. We also have Ricochet over here here in the corner. That's the Elite 80 Ricochet with the fix-up blue sleeve. Love to see it. And then we just have Lars and Drew McIntyre getting some catering. You know, they're, they're big men. They gotta fuel, the, they gotta fuel their bodies because they're massive. So, had to have that in there. So, that's right there. So, if we come through the men's locker room, you will see the MDT door. And so, the MDT door leads there. You got the door open. You have Buddy Murphy right here walking around. So, Buddy Murphy's walking around. Nothing too crazy going on right there. If we come to the middle of our setup, guys, you will see we have Retribution and the Herbiz 
is squaring off here. So, so with both these teams and factions coming to head right here, I'm sure that this is definitely going to be a feud. I know they've feuded a little bit already, so it looks like the Hurt Business is possibly about to turn face. I think Retribution is going to be the heels in this thing, but I think that's absolutely crazy. I think Mustafa Ali has pretty much called himself out to be a heel and be a bad guy, so we'll just see what comes of that. But Retribution, you got all the members. You got Mace and T-Bar, Slapjack. I know that's Io Shirai, okay? I know that's Io Shirai. It's not Mia Yim. I haven't gotten her figured yet. Once I get her figured, I'll put her in there, but you have Bobby Lashley, MVP, and Cedric with Shelton going up against Retribution. Let me know down below which team or faction you like better. I definitely like the Hurt Business better. They got bigger names. They got everything. I love Mustafa Ali to death, but uh, the Hurt Business definitely has the, the better experience. They have the better names. They have the bigger names and everything, and I don't know. It, it's hard for me to take Retribution seriously right now, so I'm, I'm interested to see where they go from here, but there is uh, Retribution and the Hurt Business scoring off right there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out this side of the of the setup real quick and then I'll work my way back all the way across here so if we come all the way over here guys we have Sasha Banks in the weight room so she's just thinking about her big Hell in a Cell matchup with Bayley can't wait for that matchup I think it was Sasha and Becky last year at Hell in a Cell that was such a damn good match bro oh my god that match was so fire it's one of my favorite matches of the year so I know that match is going to slap titties bro that match is going to be fire but here in the weight room we do have Paul Heyman sorry the, the lighting's getting a little bit cruddy over here. So right here, we do have the big dog getting a lift in before his big time Hell in a Cell match with Jey Uso and we have Paul Heyman giving him some water. You got the Universal Championship, you got the big dog with the towel on, you know, getting his good sweat in before he goes out to the ring to take on Jey Uso in that Hell in a Cell matchup. And it is an I Quit Hell in a Cell, which has never been done before, so that should be very interesting, getting some lifts in right here in the weight room. And we have Sasha Banks coming over here. That's just a little trash area over there that I, that I set up. Nothing too crazy with that. Over here, we have Akira Tozawa looking for the 24-7 champion. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't even know if R-Truth is the 24-7 champion right now. I could, uh, you know, he could not be, but every time I turn on the TV, R-Truth is the champion, and Akira Tozawa is chasing after him. So I just have Akira Tozawa looking for R-Truth, and if he would look a little bit closer, R-Truth is hiding with the 24-7 championship on top of the ambulance, and Akira Tozawa is just looking for him. So I figured I could get some work out of that. If we come beyond that into the little garage area over here, you will see the and Alexa Bliss and that pose right there was actually pretty difficult to get them to you know kind of embrace and like get up in each other's faces right there so let me know what you guys are thinking right now of the Fiend and Alexa Bliss I will say this is the best character work of Alexa Bliss throughout her career I think that she's doing a great role I think she's doing fantastic in the role right now I'm interested to see where we go from here but it is cool to see the Fiend and Alexa Bliss interacting like this and kind of seeing how they can you know form that and it really gives some good depth to her character so I'm looking forward to seeing where they go from here with that but if we come here to the middle, guys, you will see Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins yelling at each other. I know that Buddy Murphy's involved in this and stuff, but uh, we got some security and some backstage producers and things of that nature. A referee trying to break up this fight. So Seth Rollins is yelling at Rey. So Seth Rollins is trying to get his hands on Rey Mysterio for the 180th time. This feud has gone on forever. Oh my goodness gracious alive. I don't have a Dominic Mysterio figure just yet, but yes, yeah, Seth Rollins is... Uh, I I'm just sick of this feud, man. Oh my god, I'm so sick of this feud. I, I, I have reiterated it multiple times on the channel, so I won't get too much into it, but Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio getting into it right there, and you guys can see Seth Rollins is yelling at him, and you got the security breaking it up and everything. Nothing nothing wilder than that right there. We have Jay and Jimmy over here, so Jay Uso is getting prepped up, so you know, he's got the big... I, I know, look at Jimmy's feet. He doesn't have feet, okay? I used his feet for a custom. I tried to hide it by putting him behind Jay. It didn't work, okay? It did not work, but back here, you do have Jay Uso trying to get himself pumped up. He's got a big Hell in a Cell matchup. He has ha, he has seen some things in the Hell in a Cell. You know, we've seen them in New Day do some wars inside the Hell in a Cell structure, but Jimmy is trying to talk Jay Uso up for this matchup for the Universal Championship and everything. So hopefully Jay Uso doesn't quit. I definitely think he will say I quit or he'll he'll pass out or something before he says I quit. But Roman Reigns is definitely gonna retain that championship as he should. He should he should definitely do it. MDT champion, Universal Champion. So coming to the middle guys, this 
this one's sort of a heartfelt moment. We have the New Day coming together. You guys know that they are no longer on the same brand. So Xavier Woods, Kofi Kingston, and Big E all coming together, embracing and hugging together and getting that nice moment together. Because this is Hell in a Cell, this is the backstage area, they would see each other. And, you know, if they, they come to the show, Big E comes to the show, he's trying to su support his boys. He doesn't get to see them week in, week out. So he came to Hell in a Cell, and he gets to embrace his New Day brother. So I, I like that. I like that a lot. And you also got the Street Profits in their fields after seeing this. So they're like, damn, bro, I love you, bro. And he's like, love you, man. So yeah, so the, the, the New Day, you know, they embrace and they're hugging and stuff. And like the Street Profits are like, oh, geez, Brad, that, that's getting me in my feels. Get over here, Brad. I love you. And that's basically what it is. Just, just, just the brotherhood, you know, got the brotherhood going on. We come over here, guys. We will see Triple H and Stephanie, you know, they're producers for the show and they, they like to run matches back in Gorilla and they're, they're intertwined with everything. So they're just kind of discussing what is going to take place at Hell in a Cell and everything like that. And I just love the way the suited figures look. Both of them are matching. You got the nice beard for Triple H. They look great in the backstage area. It makes everything look a lot more official, so I really enjoy that. Back here, we do have Bailey, Elias, and Kevin Owens. Nothing too, you know, crazy. Uh, Elias just kind of playing and tuning his guitar. You got Bailey over there ready for her Hell in a Cell matchup. She's got the towel around the neck. SmackDown Women's Championship, the new Elite 80, Kevin Owens, and Bailey figures. Kevin Owens trying to get his mind right, trying to get back in that championship picture. Would love to see him contend for the main championships. I think he's totally worthy of it. He, he's fantastic, and they're not utilizing him in the right way right now. You also have the Viper, Randy Orton, walking down the hallway, ready to go with his Hell in a Cell matchup with Drew McIntyre. I thought after Payback or whatever show we just freaking saw, I don't remember the show. It wasn't Payback. What show was it? I can't remember, man. My mind is a piece of shh. But whatever show it was, he was in the ambulance match, and I thought for sure that was going to write him off TV. You had all the legends come back, and you had all of them help Drew McIntyre, which didn't make Drew McIntyre look that well. But uh, I thought that was going to write Randy Orton off. You know, Ric Flair drives off in the ambulance. I thought that would be a great way to end that feud off and just write him off TV for a little bit, have him come back, but that is not the case. And then we also have Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler talking it up back there. You got the hoodie on Ziggler and the robe on Roode. Who the hell knows? I highly doubt they have a matchup, but who knows? You never know what could take place at Hell in a Cell, and we're going to have to see what comes of it. But that does it for my Hell in a Cell setup. I hope you guys did enjoy the WWE figure, action figure. I don't know why I'm saying figure so many damn times, but that is the WWE action figure setup for Hell in a Cell edition. I plan on probably doing another horror setup, so if you guys want to see another horror setup, please let me know down in the comment section below. I also have my Hell in a Cell predictions coming very soon, probably the next couple days, possibly even tomorrow, so we'll have to see about that, but, but please let me know down in the comment section below what your favorite part of the setup is. Do you guys like this backstage area? I can't really keep that backstage area portion because it blocks off where I would normally film, unless I move the filming station to like right in this middle area with the car in the background. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about all that ish, but let's go ahead and get into our shout out for today's video. So huge shout out to Random Nerd for this comment on our last video. He said that whole Elite Wave was nutty. Well, it was 69 and that is hilarious. So he's referring to our Retribution Elite video or how-to tutorial where I did say, you know, that Elite 69 was a nutty wave and it's, you know, you get the, you get the thing. Huge shout out to Random Nerd for that funny comment. He got 27 likes on it. You'd love to see it. But anyways, guys, I'm getting the hell out of here. Again, please comment down below for a potential shout out in the next video. Let me know what your favorite part of the setup is. I think my favorite part is the Drew McIntyre pizza slice. Like, that's probably thumbnail worthy right there. I like the way that looks. He's reaching for the slice. He's got the slice and the slice slice. He's got the slice in hand. Love to see it. But anyways, guys, I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.